knowledge of self. There's going to be two videos here, knowledge of self, and then separately I'm going to deal with knowledge of environment. Um, this, this would be a great one to have an actual discussion on. Some things um, online classes are great for. This is one particular topic that would be much better as a discussion. Um, if we look at the book, if we look at, at 50 Miles from Tomorrow, one of the things it does a really great job of is helping us understand how the experiences of living in the Arctic, Kotzebue, of Nome, of Tennessee, all of, of his family, of uh, growing up pre um, many of the modern organizations that have come to uh, his area of the world today and how that informed and made him who he was, made him think about the way he thought about things and um, you know even looking at how differently the uh, new people from Greenland saw the world and how their world affected them and you know we, we sometimes it's called being comfortable in your own skin and he's very comfortable in his his, in his own skin, and he completely realizes how that upbringing, how those experiences affect him, and that's really important, and it makes him, really, it's one of the things that makes him so effective, make him be able to slide between both worlds, both the world of, of village life, of uh, living in the, on the um, north uh, slope, and in the Arctic, and then also be able to go to Washington, D.C. and be successful, go to Juneau, go to, you know, help with the ICC, okay? But let's talk about how, why that would be. The first thing to understand is you got to know what your own strengths and what your own weaknesses, and I want to handle those separately. Okay? We'll start with weaknesses, and people tend to focus on their own weaknesses, by knowing what you're good at, you also know what you're not good at. Okay, You know where you're weak, where you're going to need help. Okay? And that is desperately valuable knowledge. I, for example, know that uh, I am not the most organized person in the world when it comes to um, organizing things. I'm great at organizing time. I'm pretty good at organizing people. But when it comes to organizing things, it's just not there. So by having those who work for me help me in that process, and not just pretending that I can do it myself, I come out ahead. Okay? It may seem like, you know, well, maybe I'm admitting to weakness. Admitting to weakness is fine. Because I'm much better off acknowledging it's there, realizing it's there, and having those around me help with that than pretending it's not. Okay? It's not going to magically done. For none of us, there are little fairies running around and you know, casting spells uh, to, to get those things that we have a trouble with done. You know, something else that I've figured out that I'm is a manager not particularly strong at uh, is uh, being tough on my employees. Um, you know, maybe I want to be liked too much. Um, maybe it you know, makes me a little nervous. There, there are various reasons why that is, but I understand that it exists. So if it's going to be tough for me on that end, well then how do I address that? Being aware of that weakness leads me to wanting to address it. So how do I address it? I put extra effort in the hiring process. I make sure, I make double sure, probably put too much work into making sure that I hire the right person to begin with because then I won't have to fire them later. Okay? Uh, I'm pretty good at the discussion and the kind of the research to find out if it's the person that I want to work for me. And so by taking advantage of my strength and acknowledging my weaknesses there, I avoid having to use it. Okay. What are your weaknesses? It's vital to know that they're there. Okay. Because you're going to be in a position, if you're ever a manager, with people are working for you. 
And those people are not going to have the exact same strengths and weaknesses. They're going to be good at what they're good at, and it's not necessarily going to be good at what you're good at. And if you can take advantage of that, if you can see, oh, you're stronger at this than I am, and delegate those responsibilities, delegate those efforts, then you're going to come out ahead. Okay? It's like you and I, let's say we are trying to fix a car. And I'm really good at motors, and you're really good at brakes. Maybe I know how to do brakes, and maybe you know how to work on a motor, but we're not as good at it. Are we going to get it done faster if I concentrate on what I'm good at and then go do your job? Or if we each do what we're good at concurrently at the same time? And the fact is, is that we are going to come out ahead if we each focus on what we're good at. In economics, the term for it is comparative advantage. Okay? If you're good at greeting the public, and I'm good at the finance, then we're going to come out a lot better if I focus on what I'm good at and you focus on what you're good at, rather than us each trying to do both. Okay? I'm going to make more mistakes with the public. You're going to make more mistakes paying our bills, paying our employees, making sure we have enough money. Okay? Delegation of authority. How to properly delegate. Know what to focus on and what to hand off knowing your weaknesses, okay? Just as important to knowing your weaknesses is knowing your strengths. Okay. I have this amazing professor at Idaho State University that talked about don't work on your weaknesses. Work on your strengths. Now, you know, you sometimes you'll hear people give advice the other way. They'll say, you know, you need to show up your weaknesses, and he says that's baloney. The reason that you have that they're your strengths is you get better at them quicker. Okay? The hour that you put in getting better at your strength would have taken you five, six, seven, ten hours trying to get better at your weakness. And maybe you're so weak at it you actually never would have gotten better. So it's a better use of your time to sit there and try to improve what you're good at than to try to improve what you're not good at. Besides, what you learn is you learn how to compensate. So, let's give me an example. Say you're a hard worker and you're really good in a, in a high paying field. Say uh, you're an excellent you know, mechanic or you're an excellent uh, in finance. Okay? That you are so good at your job and you're so good at getting better at it that you're income starts to get kind of be as much as you want to work, not unlimited per se, but really want to make more money, work harder, okay? But your weakness is you love nice things, or maybe you love electronics, and you, you just have a hard time not buying those things. So you could work on your weakness and try really, really hard not to buy those things that you don't really need, but you want, or... Or, you would focus on your strengths, and through your hard work and through your skills, just make enough money that you can afford them. Okay? Which one's going to be easier? Trying to avoid something that's a really weakness, or continuing to do something you're already really good at? Probably continuing to do something you're really, really good at. He was teaching it in the, con in the context of teaching school, you know, and say, you know, Let's say you're really good at having a deep knowledge of what's being taught, but maybe you're not so good at making sure you're aware of what every kid's doing at every moment. Okay, what's called a withitness in school, but just just knowing what all the kids are doing. You could sit there and try to become something you're not by being able to pay better attention to the kids, coming up with little strategies, and you may have some sort of effect. Or, you could take what you're good at, which is your knowledge of the topic and that you're teaching, and just design fantastic, awesome lessons that the kids want to pay attention to. Where are you going to have more success? Trying to design something that they really are interested in? 
because it'll come naturally to you, or trying to pay better attention when that really is not something you're good at. You know, even as an athlete, you know, say we're playing basketball, say you're a good shooter, but you know you're kind of small and and uh, you know you have short arms and you're not so good at rebounding. You know, are you going to work on your rebound positioning, and but never get tall and never get long arms? Or would you be better off, if you want to be successful at basketball, becoming the best shooter you know? It's probably going to be a lot more fun to work on the shooting, since that's what you're good at. You're going to have success. You're going to want to keep working at it. Okay? So, knowledge of your weakness is important. But you don't want to focus. You've got to know it's there. You've got to be able to delegate. You've got to be able to understand what pitfalls might be coming, what mistakes you might make because of your weaknesses, and be aware of them ahead of time to be successful. But you don't want to spend a lot of time there. You don't want to worry about addressing them. Okay? This, you're going to come off better addressing your strengths. Spend your time developing the strengths, not your weaknesses, but be knowledgeable about what your weaknesses are. Now, how does this apply in the context of management? I address briefly that I work really hard on the work, the hiring side because I know I'm not so good at the firing side. Okay, but let's say you know you're really good at motivating your employees, but you tend to get so caught up in what you're doing that you don't always pay as close of attention to what they're doing as you might want them to. Well, what do you do? You think about your motivations, you put your effort there. Motivate them to be what you want them to be. By knowing that that was your strength and working on it and coming up with the greatest motivations po motivators possible, you avoid having to pay as close attention to what they're doing because they want to be doing what you're doing. Okay? It's never going to come naturally to work on the weakness. And knowing that you, that weakness exists is going to be just super helpful. Even something like this class, I don't know, it suddenly occurs to me, I wasn't going to talk about this, but it suddenly occurs to me, the weakness of this class is we're not there. So I'm not there, what am I going to do? Well, I know my strength is I'm great with technology, or generally good with technology, and I'm good at communicating, so I'm going to go out of my way and try to make sure I'm communicating with each and one, every one of you as often as possible so that we feel like we're staying in touch. Focusing on what I'm good at, the communication side of it, so that we can overcome and just be aware of the fact that I'm not there. I could try to overcome that weakness by flying up there on weekends, but to what avail? Okay? Another aspect of management and knowing yourself. Not only to know yourself, but to know your business. Know what you are. If you're in, you know, whoever you're working for, know what it is they do. What's the core competency? What is your business? Right? Focus on what your business is. More companies get in trouble during good times than bad times. More companies go bankrupt, seriously, in economic good times than in recessions. How could that possibly be? Well, what happens is times are going well, they're making a lot of money, and they start to think, oh, we make computers, maybe we could make stereos as well. Or we're selling in Anchorage, maybe we could sell in Fairbanks and Juneau as well. Okay? They start with something they're good at, and they think that they can then bridge it into something they're not good at something they don't know, something they haven't been doing, something they don't have knowledge of. Okay? And they make a big expenditure, a big outreach to try to do it, and they fail. And they went from a really super computer maker or a really successful business in Anchorage to one that's out of money and now can't even continue doing what they were doing before because they overreached. Know who you are, know what you're good at. Avoid those mistakes. It doesn't mean you never expand, but you got to be ready. It doesn't mean your business ever do what it's not doing now, but always keep in mind where your focus should be. So, we'll see you in the next video.